Hello and welcome back to a new video on the Crypto2 YouTube channel. This is the second video of our Basics of Cryptology series. In the last video of the series, we had a first look at what is cryptology. And then we had a look at what is cryptography and its basic terms. In this video, we want to have a look at cryptanalysis in its basic terms. This slide you probably remember from the last video, and we know that Cryptography is the art of making ciphers and cryptanalysis is the art of breaking ciphers. In the last video, we had a look at the left side of the tree, at cryptology, cryptography, classical and modern cryptography, and substitution and transposition ciphers. In this video, we want to have a look at cryptology and cryptanalysis and classical cryptanalysis. The modern cryptanalysis is not part of this video. And as we already know, classical cryptanalysis was mostly done by hand or maybe with some easy machines. And in this video, we also want to have a look at how to break ciphers by hand. We will have a look at how to break substitution ciphers and how to break transposition ciphers. But let's first have a look at the basic terms of cryptanalysis. The first term we need to know is what is a cryptanalyst. And a cryptanalyst is someone who analyzes a cipher or a ciphertext to break it. And there's a difference between breaking a cipher and a ciphertext as we will see later. Then we have the term attack. And an attack is a method to revert the key or the plaintext of a given ciphertext. And now we come to the difference between breaking a ciphertext and breaking a cipher. Breaking a ciphertext means that we successfully performed such an attack on a single ciphertext. And breaking a cipher means that we find an attack on a cipher that works reproducibly on ciphertexts encrypted with that particular cipher. So breaking a cipher is much more powerful than just breaking a single ciphertext. The next we want to talk about is attack types. And we have three different attack types. But before we speak about attack types, we have to make an assumption. And we do this with each of these attack types. And the assumption is that the attacker knows the system. That means that the attacker knows the used cipher that was used to encrypt a given ciphertext. And there's another term we need to know that is that we have no security through obscurity. So a as I already said, a crypto system or a cipher has to be secure if an attacker knows everything about it despite the used key. Before we speak about the attacks, you see here on the right this arrow, which goes from green to red. And I try to define the strength based on this color here. So the deeper we go here, the more powerful the attack is and the less the attacker knows. So the first one is the easiest attack and the third one is the strongest attack. And the first attack is the chosen plaintext attack. The goal here is to revert the key. And with this attack, the attacker is able to produce arbitrary plaintext ciphertext pairs and use these for reverting the key. So this is the easiest of the attacks. Then we have the attack here in the middle, which is a partially known plaintext attack. And with this attack, the goal is to revert the key or to revert the rest of the unknown plaintext. The partially known plaintext attack could be also a known plaintext attack. That means that the attacker knows the complete plaintext. But in contrast to the first attack, the attacker cannot generate new plaintext and ciphertext pairs. And as I already said, with this attack, the attacker has parts of or the complete plaintext of a ciphertext. And then we have the strongest of the three attack types, which is the ciphertext only attack. Here, the goal is to revert the key and to revert the plaintext. And with this attack, the attacker only is in possession of the ciphertext. He has no knowledge of the plaintext at all. With this slide here, I want to speak about some real world attacks. I have the brute force attack, then I have manual attacks, where we will have a look on the next slides of this video. And then we have the computerized attacks on which we want to speak about in later videos. So let's start with the brute force attack, which is also known as exhaustive key search. The brute force attack is an attack that works with every cipher. But there's an exception and this exception are perfect ciphers. 
And an example for a perfect cipher is the so-called one-time pad. We will speak about the one-time pad in later videos. And with this attack, the attacker just tests every possible key of the cipher. He decrypts the given cipher text with each of these keys and he just searches for the plain text in all the results. And of course, this attack is only suitable if it's practical to search through the key space. For instance, with a Caesar cipher, which only has 26 keys, this is possible. But for instance, with the Enigma, which has millions and billions of keys, it's not feasible to do this. Then, as I said, we have manual attacks. And I have two examples for manual attacks. For instance, we can break a monoalphabetic substitution cipher by hand using the knowledge of letter frequency distribution. And we want to have a look at this in the next slides. And there's another example, which is cut, for instance, a cipher text that was encrypted with a transposition cipher into paper scripts and then rearrange them. We will also have a look at this attack on the later slides. Then we have the computerized attacks, which I will show you in the later videos. And in videos we already had on this channel, most attacks were based on these computerized attacks. And mostly the computerized attacks are implementation of manual attacks, for instance, automated frequency analysis. Or these are heuristic attacks, which work on many classical ciphers, for instance, the monoalphabetic substitution, the transposition, and the enigma. And I plan to make a video on heuristic attacks in the future. Now let's speak about language models and letter frequency distributions. With crypt analysis, we use the fact that the letter distribution in different languages is always or nearly always the same. For instance, I have here all 26 English unigrams, so A to Z, and their distribution in the language. And as we can see here, the E is the most frequent letter, then we have the T, the A, and then we have letters that are really, really less frequent, like the J, the Q, the X, and the Z. And depending on the cipher, we can make usage of this letter distribution. How we do this, I will show you on the next slides. And here again is an example for another letter distribution. And here we have bigram distributions. On this slide, I put the 39 most frequent English bigrams. For instance, you see that the TH is the most frequent English bigram. And of course, the HE is the second most frequent and IN and so on. And we can also use this knowledge that these bigrams are more frequently used in the language than other bigrams to break ciphers, as we will see on the next slides. What makes ciphers secure? The ciphers try, or the developers of ciphers try to develop ciphers, that these ciphers flat the letter frequencies of the text, so that you cannot make any usage of these. But of course, this works more good or less good depending on the cipher. For instance, substitution ciphers, flat unigrams, bigrams, trigrams, and so on. But for instance, transposition ciphers do not flat unigrams. So if you transpose a text, the unigram frequencies remain the same, as you will see. But transposition ciphers, of course, flat bigrams, trigrams, and so on. And as a rule of thumb, you can say the flatter the frequencies of a ciphertext are, of a ciphertext that ciphers produce are, the more difficult is the analysis of these ciphers. And here are three examples with unigram frequencies, where you can see the difference between these ciphers and their um, the distribution of their letters. The first one is plain text and transposition cipher. The second one is monoalphabetic substitution. And the third one is a polyalphabetic substitution cipher. And here it's a visionaire cipher. And as you can see, plain text and transposition cipher both have the same unigram distribution. And it's clearly because the transposition cipher just only rearranges the letters in the text, but it doesn't change its frequencies. So the amount of E's always stays the same, the amount of O's always stays the same, and so on. Then we have the monoalphabetic substitution cipher. The frequencies stay the same, but the individual letters below these bars here change. Where here was the E, the most frequent letter, here it's now the U. And we can assume that the U here is the E, but encrypted. And then finally here, with the polyalphabetic substitution cipher, with the Visionaire cipher, you see more or less that the 
letter frequencies are evenly distributed. And with an even better cipher, this would be just a line here with the bars. But as you can see here, the Visionaire encryption comes close to the uniform distribution. So let's attack some real world ciphers. On this slide, I want to show you how you can break a monoalphabetic substitution cipher or a simple monoalphabetic substitution cipher. First, we have a cipher text of 26 letters, which is B, U, U, B, D, L, U, I, and so on. The first you have to do to break the cipher text here is to count the unigrams. And I did this below here. And we see that, for instance, the F is the most frequent letter and that L, D, N, and so on are the less frequent letters. And based on the fact that uh, the F is the most frequent letter, we can assume that the F is the E. And how do we go on? After counting the letters and seeing that the F may be the E, we look at bigrams, trigrams, and words. And we have another advantage here, and that is that we see the separator of words. In the real world, you would remove the spaces so that an attacker cannot make any advantage of this. So let's look at the bigrams, trigrams, and words. First of all, we see that the double letters UU here may be, for instance, NN, LL, or TT. We know it's a monoalphabetic substitution, so these U's are encryptions of the same letter. And we assume this could be an NN, LL, or TT. And then we, we see this JO here. This is a very short word, and this could be an in, an on, or an at. And then we see the word UIF here. And this may be the, and if this is the, then the UU would also be TT. If the UU is TT, then this B, U, U, B, D, L, U, I, F with a space here may be attack the. So attack the. And following on that, the F, O, F, and Z may be enemy because we know that the F is E and this could be enemy. And of course, the script analysis of the monoalphabetic substitution cipher, you have to try different things, but it doesn't need much time to break this text. And in the end, we see that this is clearly attack the enemy in the evening. So let's also have a look at how to attack columnar transposition ciphers. We have here a cipher text of 20 letters. This is here. And we want to break it. First of all, when you attack transposition ciphers, you have to determine or assume the key length. And in this case, we just assume the key length is 5. And with key length 5, we know here that this is a regular transposition. And regular means that you can write it in such a regular rectangle here. If it's irregular, you would have one column that doesn't fill the rectangle completely. But it's much easier with having a regular transposition, so we use a regular transposition as an example. The next step is to divide the text into columns with length 5, because our key length is 5, and this means that the row size is 4. So you just divide the 20 letters by 5, and you know the row size. And we just write our text here in these rows, and get this rectangle. And after that, we rearrange the rows to break the cipher text. This, of course, also works on long texts, but uh, as an example, we used here a short cipher text. And all you have to do is to look at the letters and look which letter belong to which letter. So we see that we have an A and T and an T, and our assumption is that this could be a tag. And we see also a W and an E in the first column, and we assume that this could be we. So we rearrange our text to we attack, and then we read out the transposition column-wise. And as you can see, doing so, we really get the plain text, and it's we attack at the evening. So breaking transposition ciphers by hand can also be done based on text knowledge, based on text frequencies, and so on. So now we have two tasks. The first task is to have a look at letter frequencies of different ciphers in Crypto2. And we will have a look at the monoalphabetic substitution cipher, the visionaire cipher, plain text, and the transposition cipher. I'm here now in Crypto2. If you don't know how to work with Crypto2 yet, you should have a look at our introduction video on Crypto2 that I already made for this channel. Here I want to show you now how you can make your own frequency analysis in Crypto2. In the Start Center, you search in the Template section for Frequency Analysis and double-click. 
then we make some more space. And what do we see here? We have first a text input with a plain text, and we have the frequency test component. And when you just click play, you see the letter distribution of this text. It doesn't make a difference between uppercase and lowercase letters, but with the settings you could change this, but I will leave it like this is right now. Because we want to have a look at different ciphers. So first of all we have here the plain text and you see the plain text distribution and as we already know the E for instance the most frequent letter, the T is the second most frequent, then the A and so on. So let's encrypt this text and have a look how it changes this distribution here. So I just copy the text and the first thing I want to do is use the transposition cipher. So I go to transposition in the start center, transposition cipher, then I paste the text here in the plain text part, I close the component so it will encrypt faster, and I will just click play, and here we have the cipher text. I copy it with Ctrl C and go back to our frequency analysis. And I will paste always the text on top of the existing text so that we see what happens. So I mark everything and with Ctrl V I will paste the text and you have a look here at the frequency test. And as we see, nothing changed. And this is because the transposition cipher doesn't change any frequencies of a text. So we can, I can revert this here and we see nothing changes. Let's do the same with the simple monoalphabetic substitution cipher. We go back to the start center, we search for substitution, substitution, and we use the substitution cipher. Then I just paste our plain text here, click on play, and get an encrypted text here, which was encrypted by the monoalphabetic substitution cipher. I also copy it, go back to our frequency analysis, and again I paste it over the existing plain text, and we will see what happens here. As you see, the frequencies just went one step to the right. And this is because the substitution template here does a Caesar shift, so it's not a simple substitution cipher, this is also a Caesar. So let's open another template and I use the template substitution cipher using a password and I again copy my plain text here to the new template and with this template we can create more difficult substitution ciphers. And as we see here this is a much more difficult encrypted substitution. And I copy the text here, go back to the frequency analysis and again copy it over. And as we see now, the frequencies just jumped around and changed totally. And this is because this is a simple monoalphabetic substitution. I revert this and finally we will have a look at the Visionaire cipher. So I open the Visionaire cipher, paste the plain text here. We have a key, let's make it a little longer, Turing machine, play, and here we have a Visionaire encrypted cipher text. I copy this, we go back to the frequency analysis, and we paste it over our plain text. And as you can see here, the Visionaire cipher encrypts even better. The distribution of the unigrams is more or less the uniform distribution. And we can see that this is a polyalphabetic cipher and not more a monoalphabetic cipher. And this is how you can use the frequency test to have an idea when you have a cipher text and you don't know the type of cipher, which type of cipher this could be. And this was everything that I wanted to show you in this short video. I hope you like it. If so, please give a thumbs up. And if you did not yet subscribe to our channel, I would be also happy if you subscribe to our channel. And in the next videos, 
I probably will have a look at more modern ciphers and on modern cryptanalysis and we will probably have some more videos on basics of cryptology. So thank you very much for watching. See you in the next videos.